Hi, welcome to my STAT512 final project where I'm going to be analyzing my health and fitness data that I've collected for the past few years. So the outline for today's presentation, uh, we're going to start with the background of the project and why I chose this idea. And then we'll get into the data set and the pipeline of the project and then some exploratory data analysis and then the actual analysis consisting of model building, diagnoses, and validation. And then finally talking about the applications and conclusion. So let's start off with the background of the idea and why I chose it. So since my childhood, I've always been into a variety of sports. I started off with baseball and swimming, and then I moved on to hiking, which I did through Boy Scouts, and then basketball, which I played recreationally in high school. In sophomore year of college, I started to get a lot more serious about nutrition and finding foods that give me consistent energy and making me feel satiated. After COVID hit last year, I decided to go a step further and bought an Apple Watch to help log my fitness and nutrition. I started tracking calories, micro and macronutrients, workout intensity, heart rate, steps, and a lot more, which we'll dive into. Now let's dive a bit more into the data set that I constructed. From the Apple Health app on my phone, I've collected metrics like body fat percentage, body mass, BMI, walking and running distance, the total number of flights climbed, lean body mass, step count, and walking speed. This has been automatically logged since I bought my current iPhone, which was around in 2019. From my Apple Watch, which I purchased last year during COVID, I started being able to track more workout-related measures like how many calories I burn a day, exercise time, stand time, active heart rate, heart rate variability, oxygen sa saturation, resting heart rate, and the total energy that I burn throughout a day. I wear my Apple Watch constantly through the day except when I shower and sleep, so the data is quite high frequency. In the past year, I started using the Strong app on my iPhone to track the number of workouts I have per day, the durations, and how I perceive the intensity of each workout, which is known as RPE. The Strong app syncs with my iPhone and my Apple Watch, which makes it a pretty seamless integration. And lastly, since last year, I've been using MyFitnessPal to track calories and other micro and macronutrients. I've been quite consistent with tracking and have only missed like a handful of days. Now let's dive into the pipeline of this project. I first started by extracting, transforming, loading, and merging the data in Python. Then I continued with pre-processing and feature engineering, which included imputation and other steps. And lastly, I ended with the analytics, which we'll dive into in this presentation. The final data set that I constructed was aggregated by each day, and it resulted in 681 records and 22 features. When analyzing the data, I first want to get an overview of the features, distributions, and relationships between variables. Here are some of the distributions. Most of them seem normally distributed, but others seem bimodal or skewed. As we will see when constructing models, these could play a role when performing diagnostics. We can also take a look at this heat map to see how variables are related. As you can probably see, there does, see, there does seem to be multicollinearity between many of the predictors. We will deal with this issue when constructing some of our models. Now let's dive further into the analysis and research questions. There were three main questions I was curious to study from this data set. The first being what is my body fat percentage? The second being how much food should I eat each day to maintain my current physique? And the third being if it fits your macros or counting calories? Let's start by studying the first research question. High body fat percentage is associated with many diseases that are life-threatening like heart disease, stroke, high blood pressure, and type 2 diabetes. A healthy body fat percentage is considered to be between 21 and 33%, while the average American has 40%. The current ways to measure body fat include expensive weighing scales, which have bioimpedance technology, and in-body scans, which are quite pricey procedures. The Clinica University in Spain devised the Cunbe model to predict body fat based on BMI, age, and sex, which are quite generic predictors. As you can see here, here's the model that they've constructed. And in this question, 
we seek to determine, can we build a model that predicts my body fat with even more precision than this current Kanbei model? I began by constructing a full first order model. Right off, the, right off the bat, I saw that many predictors seemed insignificant with low p-values compared to alpha equals 0 0.1. This original model, however, does explain around 94% of the variation in body fat, which is quite high. We can still explore some other models. I proceeded by conducting the GLT to see if these insignificant predictors could be dropped. The null hypothesis involved the reduced model with the predictors dropped, while the alternative hypothesis involved the full model. With the p-value less than alpha, I, conducted that, I concluded that the predictors could be dropped. And as you can see, the resulting model is, pre is presented here and has a slightly lower r-squared, which is 0 0.9367, compared to the previous model. Next, I wanted to build a third model using stepwise model selection. It took nine iterations for the AIC to converge, but here is the resulting model with an R-square of about 0.9397. Lastly, I wanted to construct a model using the best subsets algorithm. I chose the model with the lowest press P since prediction is the ultimate goal of this research question. The resulting model had nine predictors. To evaluate these models, I proceeded with five-fold cross-validation, and the third model obtained from stepwise regression is what I selected as the ultimate model. It has the lowest root mean squared error and the highest R squared. After obtaining this final model, I performed diagnostics which included checking for constant various, normality of residuals, influential points, and multicollinearity. Many of the residual plots and Shapiro tests indicated non-constant variance and non-normality of residuals. There were also four influential points by considering Cook's distances. And multicollinearity definitely seems to exist between weight and BMI, as we can see in this heat map. The final model was constructed by performing weighted least squares regression to correct the non-constant variance and non-normality of residuals. The four influential points were also dropped, which is okay, since the, data set, since the data set's number of records is greater than 10 times the number of parameters. So this is quite a large data set. And an interaction term was also added between the correlated predictors. This final model predicts my body fat to be 11.25%, while the Kanbe model predicts 11.89%. As of last week, the true value was 11.29% when I measured it. This final model seems to predict better than the Kanbe model, as we saw on the last slide. However, there could still be some potential issues. The Kanbei model is definitely more generalizable. The, this university in Spain that made the model used a much larger data set with more people. This model I have constructed is only fit to my data. Precisely comparing the Kanbei model with my model is also difficult since we don't have access to the prediction intervals and confidence intervals for the Kanbei model. And lastly, my weighing scale that reports body fat could have some measurement errors and may report inaccurate numbers. Despite these issues, this model can still be used to give me a rough idea of my body fat, which can be really useful when I'm somewhere with a weighing scale that, that does not report this measure. The next research question I wanted to study was how much food should I eat daily to maintain my current physique? In order to maintain your weight, you should be eating at your total daily energy expenditure or TDEE, which is how many calories you burn per day. There are many online calculators such as this one that report TDEE from very generic features. Some research papers indicate that TDEE can be more precisely estimated using more factors like heart rate, exercise duration, number of workouts per day, and RPE. So we will try to build a model that is even better than these online calculators that use very generic predictors. I first began by constructing a first order model by using the predictors suggested in these on, by using the predictors that are in these online TDE calculators and also those suggested by numerous research papers I've reviewed. Next, I performed diagnostics on the model and saw that the Brown Foresight tests indicated non-constant variance, the Shapiro tests indicated non-normality of the residuals, the Cook's distances suggested that five points were influential and multicollinearity definitely existed between weight and body fat, as we can see here. 
To correct these violations, I built a model with weighted least squares regression. Upon performing cross-validation and looking at the press values, it's clear that the first ordinary least square model is better despite some assumptions still being violated. The final model I decided to use was the ordinary least squares model. This table you can see has five records of new data that I recorded just last week. When I compared the results of the online calculator to my custom calculator using this model, the MSE of my calculator is a lot lower, as we can see. Ultimately, this seems to be a pretty good model that provides a decent estimate of my TDEE. Some potential issues include that the TDEE in the training data may be inaccurate since Apple probably uses their own model to compute it. This custom TDEE calculator is also probably not generalizable to the public since it's fit to my data. The data set to fit the model is also small considering that the body undergoes changes throughout years and years and decades. This calculator may be reliable now, but maybe not in the future if I change my fitness goals or reduce my commitment to it. Nonetheless, this custom calculator can still be used with other online calculators and reports to give me a baseline of how much I should eat. Now moving on to the third research question. Many athletes debate whether or not they should follow an if it fits your macros diet or simply count calories. I want to study whether it actually makes a difference when it comes to achieving fitness goals. If I can build a reliable model to predict calories from macros, it would be equivalent to track macros or calories. After reading a few medical journals, I also came to learn that foods with high carbs typically have high fat and foods with high protein have low fat. This multicollinearity will play a role when we build models. I started off by building a full second order model due to the medical journals I read suggesting that there is multicollinearity between the predictors. Next I performed diagnostics to check if any multiple linear regression assumptions were violated. Some residual plots and brown foresight tests indicated non-constant variance. The Shapiro test suggested that residuals are not normally distributed and upon a evaluation of the Cook's distances, I identified five clear influential points. To correct these violations, I started by using the Box-Cox method to transform Y. I also looked at the AV plots of this transform model to verify that all the predictors add some value to the model. All plots had non-zero slopes, which confirmed this. As another attempt to correct assumptions violations, I went about constructing a weighted least squares regression model. After constructing three models, I applied cross-validation to compare them. I decided to choose the first model, which was the ordinary least squares model, as it had the highest R squared and the lowest press value, which I computed. As you can see, the final model relies on carbs, fat, protein, and their interactions to predict calories. I identified three common food items, which is a McDonald's hamburger, a Dairy Queen large frosted animal cookie blizzard, and 100 grams of strawberries to see how the model performed. As we can see on the right, these predictions seem, the predictions that the model concluded seem quite close to the true caloric amounts. I also compared these predictions to the predictions of other models and noticed that this model had the lowest MSE. Ultimately, using our final model, we can see that it doesn't really make a difference if we measure calories or macronutrients. However, one major issue to this question is that nutrition labels often vary depending on the source. Some claim that 100 grams of strawberries has 33 calories, while others claim it may have 40. These discrepancies can make model evaluation difficult and unreliable. Anyhow, at the end of the day, this model still gives us a pretty solid baseline. Thanks so much for listening, and I hope that you learned something from these research questions.